Hey guys, it's Podge, and in this video, we're going to be going over all the brand new notables that were just announced by GGG coming with the Cluster Jewel system in Delirium League. Now, I'm going to be doing a short version of um, like this video because I don't really want to sit here and rattle off every all 280 of them to you. I think that would be pretty boring for you as well. Um, so what I've done is I've made a list um, of the ones that really stand out to me as being quite powerful in certain ways. Um, and so what I'm going to do is go through those and uh, yeah, basically shorten it up and show you the good ones that I, I found personally right off the bat. So I'm going to read the article first and then we'll just go through once we get to it. It says, in Path of Exile Delirium, we're introducing cluster jewels which can be placed in the outermost sockets of your passive skill tree. These jewels expand your passive tree and provide powerful new possibilities for your character builds. There are 280 new notables for you to utilize in your builds. Today's news unveils them all. Well, for context, currently in the passive tree that we have now, there are 350 notables. So this is like a 75% increase in size, essentially, through these jewels, which um, is freaking bonkers. <laughs> so um, anyway, many of these jewels also create more sockets, which you can branch quite far outside of your tree if you want to heavily invest in these passives. There are three sizes of a jewel, large, medium, and small, each with a different focus. Large jewels may be placed in the outermost passive tree sockets and focus on offensive bonuses. Medium jewels may be placed in the outermost passive tree sockets or a socket created by a large jewel and they focus specifically on specific mechanics and utility effects. Small clustered passives uh, can be placed in sockets created by large or medium jewels and sockets on the outermost parts of the passive skill tree. Small jewels focus on defensives. So here's a nice little picture of how it works. So like this is um, at the top uh, of the Templar slash Witch area. Um, and yeah, look at it go. So there's like, I don't know, 30 points here maybe, um, which is pretty cool. Like, but I mean, you don't have to go as big on this as this. Obviously, you could just get like one cluster like this if you get a good roll or what, you know, whatever. So it says cl clusters can be... Cluster jewels can be crafted using all of the same methods that you're used to using with other Path of Exile items. Like other jewels, they can have up to two prefixes and two suffixes. It's worth noting that the number of passive skills added by the jewel and the effect of the small nodes are both enchantments, not implicit mods. Um, this means that they cannot be re-rolled with blessed orbs and will not be overwritten if you add a corruption exclusive implicit mod to the jewel. Now that's interesting. I wonder what the, uh, like corrupted ones would be. <laughs> anyway, let's get stuck in. So these top ones, I believe, are from the unique, um, the unique jewels, um, but I'm not sure, but, but they have flavor text, so I'm assuming that they are um, unique items. Disciple of Kotava. Every second you consume a nearby corpse to recover 5% of your life and mana, 10% more damage taken if you haven't consumed a corpse recently. It's actually so broken, dude. 10% <laughs> um, more damage if you haven't consumed a corpse for, like, bossing. Like, pff, if it doesn't have ads for a while, you know. That's really freaking strong. And 5% of life and mana, like, every second. Dude. Nuts. <laughs> Lone Messenger. You can only have one Herald. 50% more effect of Heralds on you. 100% more damage with hits from Herald skills. 50% more damage over time with Herald skills. Minions from Herald skills deal 25% more damage. Oh, Sentinel of Purities and freaking Herald of Agony. They really didn't need to like this sort of treatment, but um, I think we're going to probably see some hefty minion nerfs coming like this, this tomorrow. So, you know, get excited for that. Anyway, Nature's Patience. Gain two Grasping Vines each second while stationary. 2% chance to deal double damage per Grasping Vine. 1% less damage taken per Grasping Vine. And you can have up to 10 Vines um, inflicting 8% less movement speed per Vine. So 80% less movement speed, so you're pretty damn slow. But you do get 20% chance to deal double damage, which is pretty nice. But I don't know if it's worth the trade-off for a lot of builds, so depends. Secrets of Suffering. Cannot ignite, chill, freeze, or shock. Critical strikes inflict scorch, brittle, and sapped. So that's pretty good. Like the the new ailments, they're very underutilized and um, they aren't very prevalent in the game. I don't think. Um, but hopefully, more options for these would be quite good. 
I can't see myself using it though, but um, you know, some people might. It's up, it's up to you. Kineticism. Attack projectiles always inflict bleeding and main and knock back enemies. Projectiles cannot pierce, fork, or chain. I think this is so interesting, and I'd love to see more things like this. Um, because, you know, pierce is so strong, I think, you know, and so is chain, fork as well. You know, they're all very strong, but just, like, knockback is very, like, underutilized, especially for, you know, bow builds or two, so it's pretty cool. Veterans Awareness. 10% of all elemental resistances and maximum elemental resistances while affected by a non vile guard skill. Wait, what? 10% to all maximum elemental resistances? That's freaking nuts. 20% more damage taken if a non vile guard buff was lost recency, recently. 20% additional physical damage reduction while affected by a non vile guard skill. That is, uh, that's freaking crazy. <laughs> Hollow palm technique. This one's hell exciting. Count as dual wielding while you are unencumbered. 60% more attack speed while you are unencumbered. 14 to 20 attack added, added attack physical damage per 10 dexterity while you are unencumbered. So when you have no gloves, no main hand item or no off hand item. So it's basically uh, an alternative to face breakers. So cool. Anyway, so from here on out, I'm going to be using my trusty notepad that I've, uh, you know, created to go through the ones. I went from top to bottom, so we're going to go through and look at these, which I think really broken. Deep cuts, 15% chance to impale enemies on attacks. You know, that's all right. Impales you inflict last one additional hit. That is so strong, especially for, like, champion, dude. Just more impale stacks is, like, such fat damage for pure physical builds. Like, holy crap, dude. That's so good, like, definitely, like, if you're a melee champion, you'd want to be going for that, for sure, dude. Um, next one, I'm just going to copy and paste these out of here, because I think it's going to be easier, so... Force Multiplier, 5% chance to deal double damage, 25% increased physical damage. It might not be that, like, great in the, in the long term, but, like, as a early on, like, if you can pick this up, like, you know, 5% more damage is always welcome. So, the next one is Vicious Skewering. Let me just pop this in here. Oh, it's right here. Never mind. 10% uh, chance to call bleed, cause bleeding. 10% chance to impale on attacks. 15% increased effective impales inflicted by hits that also inflict bleeding. Which is uh, so good for, like, builds that are sort of, like, on the fence. Like, they want to do a bit of both, you know? Like, they're not going big dick on impale and they're not going big dick on bleed but they maybe want to do a bit of a hybrid sort of thing like they're just they're rooting through their tree sort of benefits grabbing a bit of both i think that's really cool like for sure um grim oath 10 percent of physical damage is extra chaos damage is also like always good poison builds especially like why not um next one vengeful commander anger wrath and hatred has 30 percent increased aura effect that's really strong for a lot of elemental builds. It's quite nice. So it's definitely not terrible. Um, let's keep going. Next one is Overwhelming Malice. Where are you? Ah, here. 10% chance to gain unholy might for four seconds on critical strike. So good for, uh, you know, assassins or just any crit poison build. Anything that's doing, um, what's it called? Perfect Agony. That's like pretty damn good too. Um, you know, 30% of physical damage is extra chaos damage is so good. Next one, Savage Response. 50% uh, crit multiplier if you've taken a Savage hit recently and 40% increased critical strike chance. Very, very, very good for Berserker, um, especially if you get Crave, I think it's Crave the Slaughter. Um, the one that gives you 40% um, more damage, but you take 10% increased damage as well. I think that... Um, a savage hit is every like yeah more than fifteen percent of your life at once. So you know you're gonna be sort of almost always having the extra crit multiplier, which is very very good. Sleepless sentries. Okay, twenty percent increased totem damage, twenty percent increased totem duration, and attack skills have plus one to max number of ballista totems. Very very good for bow builds, dude. Bow ballista builds. Anything like you know. What were they playing at, like, start of last league? Uh, I think it was Explosive Arrow, like, Ballista Totems. It was pretty sick. Um, 
Rapid infusion, 50% increased effect of infusion and 5% increased movement speed while you have infusion. Now, infusion grants 10% more, um, more damage while uh, channeling, I think it is. It's a support gem, usually granted by a support gem. Um, so, and the increased movement speed is, it's a great combination for something like Cyclone where you're channeling and you're also moving at the same time. Um, I'd like to see them add this, like, um, maybe for this to be really strong, um, they could add like, you know, 5% chance to gain infusion, like while channeling or something like that. You know what I mean? On hit. Yeah. That's what I think anyway. Next up we have Hex Breaker. <gasps> Dum dum dum. 8% increased attack and cast speed while channeling. Immune to curses while channeling. So good for like Cyclone, dude. Like any channeling build, get, getting curse immunity is freaking nutty. So good, dude. Next up, fasting. 20% increased flash charges gained. 20% increased movement speed while under no flask effects. Really, really, really good synergy um, for something, even like a Pathfinder, if you, you know, burn your flasks, you don't like you lose that movement speed bonus. Um, and yeah, just any, most builds really are going to benefit pretty heavily from this. You know, if you can get this while leveling, I wouldn't imagine that you could, but if you could, then pff, dude, <laughs> so good. Um, where's the next one? Mob mentality. 20% increased Warcry cooldown recovery speed. You and nearby party members gain 5 rage when you Warcry. It's actually so good for any, like, um, you know, people who enjoy party play. Um, to be able to gr grant your allies rage, um, that's really nice. Especially if you have invested in raid, um, Warcry's, like, cooldown recovery and stuff like that. To the point where you can get them, like, where you can get it quite often. Um, and you can just spam rage for your allies, which is pretty sick. Sorry, I should say your party members, not allies. Anyway, um, Cry Wolf. I think we've already had the preview of this one, but War Cry duration. War Cries count as having 10 nearby additional enemies, which is really, really good for bossing, especially like Enduring Cry and stuff. Um, and War Cry buff effect. So yeah, definitely like strong as hell and very nice. Uh, haunting Shout, 20% increased Warcry cooldown recovery speed. Um, enemies taunted by your Warcries, intimidated and unnerved, nerved, <laughs> unnerved, unnerved. Um, also very good for, you know, party play. Also, not just that, but, you know, minion builds almost as well. Um, yeah, pretty much anything where you have a, a pet or, you know, a friend. <laughs> it's very, very good for uh, their damage and yours. Uh, what's next? Uh, blood scent. Where is it? Axes with uh, attacks with axes and swords grant one rage on hit. No more than once every second. That's fine. Like rage, so good, dude. It's actually so strong. As you can see, one percent increased attack damage per one rage. So I think it works out um, to fifty percent increased attack damage, twenty five percent increased attack speed, and uh, like. 10% increased movement speed. So good, dude. So good. Um, next one is Overlord. Now, I, I'm going to have to type this in because I'm not sure where it is. Ah, here it is. Okay. 30% increased damage with maces, scepters, or staves. Gained fortify for six seconds on melee hit. So good, dude. Like, melee builds, just hit an enemy once, have fortify for six seconds, basically have permanent fortify. It makes me wonder, like, how they're going to balance this around something like the champion node where you have you have fortify. Like, I feel like that's, like, kind of unnecessary now, depending on how easy this is to get. Like, I don't know. You know, why, why would you get the... Why would you get that if you can, uh, you know, just pop one of these up? So, next one, disease vector. Enemies poisoned by you cannot regenerate life and 10% uh, multiplier for damage over time while wielding a claw or dagger. Um, enemies not being able to regenerate life is freaking so good. The amount of times in Metamorph League, especially, like, though you'd get those regen bosses. If you were playing a dot build, like I was at the start of the league, trying to, like, freaking... Uh, try, trying to, like, you know, get them to... Basically, you're, like, racing the health bar. Like, your damage was so much slower based on, like, their regen because they had some nutty regen. So this is very, very strong. Uh, wind up is also here, 15% in, uh, critical strike multiplier with claws or daggers and 10% chance to gain a power charge on non-critical strike. 
that's basically assassin. So that's very, very strong for sure, dude, for like non-assassin builds. Super nice, super nice. Okay, next one is tempered arrowheads. Just here, bows skills have 10% to damage over time multiplier. Bow skills have 20% increased skill effect duration, 10% increased duration of ailments inflicted while wielding a bow. This, uh, this is very interesting. This is great for like ignite builds, um, you know, burning arrow or even um, caustic arrow, things like that. Um, toxic rain, like they're all like any sort of dot bow build. It's very, very, very nice. And next one is Explosive Force. Enemies killed by your one hits have a 10% chance to explode, dealing a quarter of their life as chaos damage. 10% increased, 10% of one physical damage is extra chaos. Anything that gives you ex enemies explode is like nuts, dude. Um, so I think there are a few of these sort of passives um, that are coming, so we'll, we'll definitely be highlighting them here. Um, crazy, crazy, crazy strong. Uh, where are we up to? Devastator. I feel like that's here somewhere, but I've missed it again, so we're just going to type it in. Devastator. Here it is. 20% increased attack damage, 20% increased damage with ailments from attack skills. Enemies killed by your attack skills have a 15% chance to explode. I think that's almost like... That's super strong. Um, dealing a tenth of their maximum life as physical damage. That's really good because you can scale these explosions too. One tenth of their life is a lot. <laughs> so it's very, very strong. Um, next one is Seal Mender. Uh, skills supported by Unleash have 30% increased seal gain frequency. That's very, very nice quality of life, dude. That's like basically 30% more cast speed. Like very, very strong. Smoking Remains. That's next anyway. I wonder where that is. That'll be, like, all the way down here. 10% chance to create a smoke cloud on kill. Very, very good um, for defenses. Smoke clouds blind enemies, and blinded enemies have basically 50% less chance to hit you. Um, so very good if you're any sort of evasion character, um, or, you know, any sort of, you know, any build, really. Um, always benefits from uh, blind, so it's very good. Master of Fire. Nearby enemies have fire exposure. Nearby, basically is a like non-descriptive term just basically saying that enemies like on screen essentially that's the way i see it is enemies on screen have minus 10 to fire resistance which is pretty damn cool cremator and ignited enemies you hit are destroyed on kill being able to destroy corpses um and it not get detonated by like random bullshit is very very strong defensively especially in hardcore um, yeah, so that's a that's a good one too if you are interested in, in that sort of defensive mechanism. Touch of Cruelty is the next one. Now, I don't see it, so we're going to have to type it in. Touch of... Oh, it's down here. Chaos skills have 10% chance to hinder enemies on hit with 30% reduced movement speed, so it's a very nice defensive slow for your enemies. Or for you, <laughs> affecting your enemies. Um, enemies hindered take 10% increased chaos damage, which is 10% more damage. It's quite nice, quite nice indeed. Um, unspeakable gifts. Enemies you kill have 10% chance to explode, dealing quarter of their maximum life as chaos damage. This is basically um, a, the occultist, like the occultist in a notable dude, like crazy strong. Actually so strong. Makes me wonder like what kind of ascendancy stuff they're going to have to do, if, you know, depending on how easy these are to get. Um, where are we? Unspeakable gifts, right here. Nope, we've done that one, okay. Renewal. Minions regenerate 1% of life per second. Minions have 10% chance to deal double damage when they are on full life. Very, very, very strong for minions. Um, depending on how often they are on full life. If you have a lot of regen for your minions, if you make them very tanky, 10% um, chance to deal damage, double damage is very good. Like I said, um, I do think that minions are going to get absolutely destroyed tomorrow when the patch notes come out, but we're going to see. Maybe not all of them. Things like SRS are like fine, but you know, whatever. We'll see, we'll see what happens anyway. Um, Rotten Claws. Minions have 20% chance to impale on hit with attacks. So good, dude. Like skeletons and zombies or whatever any physical minion like very very good getting the impale stack you know having the stacking damage like adding is like pff, so good for bossing 
Bossing is very, very good with that one. Uh, skeletal Atrophy. Skeletons have 10% chance to wither enemies on hit, which means they take increased chaos damage. Um, skeletons have 30% of physical damage converted to chaos damage. We might see a resurgence of some poison minion builds, and if that's true, then I'm all for it. I, I do love some poison minions. I do love poison in general, but, you know, poison minions is something that... Poison minions, just so cool. Anyway, next up, hulking corpses. Where are we at? Minions... Okay, this one's interesting, right? Minions have 20% increased maximum life, obviously very strong. 20% increased raised zombie size, and raised zombies have 5% chance to taunt on hit. That's very good. Minion taunt is OP for sure. Um, I'm not sure what 20% increased zombie size actually does for them, except maybe increase the size of the hitbox so they can sort of block damage a bit better. Um, someone let me know in the comments um, if... Uh, you know, what it means, to, you know, rather than just a visual thing, if it actually makes a difference to, like, their area of effect or something like that with their slams and stuff. Next up, Blowback. Ignites you, inflict, deal damage 15% faster. 15% more ignite damage, like Burning Arrow, whatever. Whatever ignite build you're playing, you want to grab this if you can get it. It's very strong. Fan the Flames. Um, basically, a radius of 15 prolif. Very, very good super strong next up is rend 12 percent to damage over time multiplier for bleeding and 30 percent increased bleeding duration it's good this is good like it, you know anything to do with bleed bleed definitely needs some love i feel compared to impale and like poison and everything else like bleed is definitely lacking and i think this is a very good 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 note for it exposure therapy there it is 10 percent to damage over time multiplier and 30% chaos resistance to damage over time. So it's very strong for like your poison. Um, sorry, yeah, well, any any sort of dot build that you're doing is going to increase benefit from the damage. But obviously, 30% um, increased chaos resistance from damage over time is strong as hell for, you know, if you want to be poisoned, but you, I mean, nobody wants to be poisoned unless you're like a self poisoning build, but. You know, taking 30% less damage from that is uh, very damn strong, you know, especially for bosses like, um, what's his name? The snake guy, you know, that bloke. He does a lot of poison stuff, so it's good. Uh, next one is Chilling Presence. Nearby enemies are chilled. Straight, simple, straightforward, but, um, you know, enemies, you know, slowing the action speed by 10%, and then on top of that, you can get a lot of chill effect. Um, to push those values even higher. I mean, you'd probably need quite a lot to make it worthwhile, but it's a very interesting note, I think. Um, definitely something that could be cool in some builds, for sure. Um, what's next, anyway? Where are we up to? Deep Chill. That is just here. 10% to cold damage over time multiplier and 30% increased effect of chill has a very strong synergies with bone chill support, um, for sure. Um, because it has a, a line that says um, nearby or enemies take uh, cold damage, increased cold damage proportional to chill effect or something like that. It's like one of those sort of lines. It's very, very strong. Overshock. So 30% increased lightning damage. Your shocks can increase damage taken by up to a maximum of 60% and 30% increased effective shock. So basically, you're getting 10% more juice out of your shock if you can pretty much cap that out. That's crazy. I think you would have to go elementalist for this, um, you know, to reach that kind of a cap, but it's pretty damn strong for sure if, if, if you can pull it off, for sure. Uh, Master of Fear is the next one right here. Enemies you curse are intimidated and unnerved. Um, take 10% increased attack and spell damage. It's very strong for party play, especially if you've got like someone that's basically a curse bot. Um, super good, super good for that. Or even for yourself if you're just doing a curse focus build, you know, like Bane or something. Very nice. Um, where are we up to? What was this one? This one was Master of Fear, so we're up to Endbringer which is here. 25% increased damage for each Herald affecting you. This is great for um, Elementalists because they have the Herald Reservation um, nodes 
or the node that lets you basically run three heralds quite easily. So 75% increased damage is, and that's global damage too. So pretty good. The next one, um, self-fulfilling prophecy. This one here, ah, plus one to critical strike chance of herald skills. Um, basically you can have a free auto bomber. If you can keep this going, you can chain it. You do this this node with an with, as an assassin as well, just like crazy base crit, chuck increase critical strike on, and then all of a sudden you've probably got crit, crit capped like heralds, which is so sick, dude. Next good one, um, pure agony, one maximum number of sentinels of purity, um, and plus five to maximum virulence stacks. It's very very strong for herald of agony. I th feel like this is gonna get nerfed very hard um, for them to be offering something like that is so strong either that or the jewel is going to be quite rare so we're not sure on the rarities of them but you know i guess we'll just have to see next one disciples um one percent additional physical damage reduction per summon sentinel of purity is pretty good you lose virulence 30 percent slower that's great if you're a Pathfinder, you stack the um, virulence, like so your virulence uptime is much, much higher. And uh, minions deal 20% increased damage while you're affected by Herald, obviously Herald of Agony, Herald of Purity. Both Heralds, both have minions. Great self-synergy. It's a good node, it's a good node. Um, so follow-through is next here. Projectiles deal 15% increased damage for each remaining chain. Freaking bonkers if you're doing... Um, Cobra Lash, because that skill chains quite a lot, um, but it's not so great if you're doing a poison variant, um, unfortunately, because it's projectile damage, it's not generic damage, um, so yeah, it, it will only scale hits, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. So, next one, Aerodynamics, where is that? Projectiles pierce an additional target. 20% uh, increased projectile speed and 10% increased projectile damage. Very, very good for a lot of projectile builds. Having pierce, like extra sources of pierce is always good for your clear speed. You know, you can just shred through packs a lot easier. It's damn good. Next one, chip away. Chip away is 25% increased brand activation frequency if you haven't used a brand skill recently. 20% increased brand attachment range. Very, very strong. Next one, uh, where is it? Grand Design. You can cast an additional brand. Uh, brand skills have 20% increased duration, 10% increased brand activation frequency, which is basically cast speed, um, you know, how often they tick, tick their damage, um, and 20% increased brand attachment range. It's very, very nice indeed. Um, next one, Set and Forget. That is here. This is 25% um, increased trap damage, 12% increased area of effect, 25% uh, reduced trap duration, and 40% increased trap trigger area of effect. Very strong if you are doing a non-saboteur trapper. Um, any sources of increased trap trigger area of effect are always welcome if you are doing like perhaps a inquisitor um, trapper or an elementalist trapper or, you know, whatever trapper it might be. Very, very good. Um, expendability, um, throw additional trap or mine, 10% chance, very strong, strong for getting them out quicker, which is good, reaching your maximum, super nice, uh, where are we up to, um, surprise sabotage, where's that, here, um, crit multi for traps and mines, and 5% pe um, elemental penetration is very, very good, um, solid damage, worth, worth it, um, depending on how rare it is, you know, um, if it's quite a common jewel, which I, I, I wouldn't imagine it would be very rare, to be honest, but it's quite strong, so it's worth grabbing grabbing if you can get it. Um, Fettle is next. 20 to maximum life and 10% increased maximum life. That is almost as good, if not just as good, as the Scion Life Wheels Constitution. Um, so this is pretty freaking strong. We're about to get into some really broken ones now, <laughs> some really broken nodes. So, um, next up is surging vitality, eight percent increase maximum life. Regenerate 0.5 percent of life per second every five seconds. Regenerate 10 percent of life over one second. It's like a mini guardian, I think it is. Yeah, guardian. Um, 
which, you know, that much regen, I mean, it, it does work out to be on average 2% life regeneration, but sometimes just that having that burst of regen is actually so nice for your defense um, and survivability. Next up, Wall of Muscle, 6% increase maximum life, 5% increased strength, super good for any strength stacking build for sure, Baron builds, um, you know, Brutus Lake's lead sprinkler builds, you know, that um, stack strength to get um, fi flat fire damage, very, very good. Uh, next one is scintillating idea, 20% increased maximum mana, um, damage penetrates 5% elemental res uh, lightning resistance, which uh, is pretty strong if you're any sort of lightning, maybe uh, you're scaling energy shield off your mana, maybe you're scaling damage off your mana, maybe you're doing mom, like mind over matter, like so it's very strong, very strong, very versatile as well, which is good. Uh, holistic health is next. 10% life and mana. Again, very strong, basically similar to the last one. Um, well, the one before actually. Um, yeah, mi mind over matter. Um, basically, energy shield scaling, you know. It's all gravy, isn't it? It's all gravy. Um, energy from naught. 100 to maximum energy shield. This is very strong. This is almost like having an extra piece of gear on in terms of the amount of energy shield it gives you. Um, I remember when Occultist had a node like this. I think it was 150. Um, and it was very, very strong. So this is this is one of the strongest ones, honestly, for CI builds or even hybrid builds, you know. Very, very good. Um, Will Shaper gained 5% of maximum mana as extra maximum energy shield is basically a mini hi um, Hierophant um, effect, which is cool as hell. It's great for your scaling if you're scaling your energy shield off your mana so, and for in scaling and whatnot. Um, Heart of Iron gained 10% of maximum life as extra armor. Very, very strong. Um, you know, some builds get like 8 Eight thousand life, like you know, and that that's eight hundred armor, like basically for free. That's more more than a lot of gear will give you, like you know, a single piece of gear. So you know, it's almost like having an extra extra piece of armor on, which is pretty damn nice. Uh, Prismatic carapace, thirty percent increased armor, plus one to all maximum elemental resistances. This is super duper strong, dude. Maximum ores, like. You know, so having your resist capped at 76 instead of 75 is like, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually makes you a lot tankier. Um, Prismatic Dance next, same but the evasion rate rating version. Um, you know, great for bow builds, great for pretty much any build. Um, next up, we have Natural Vigor just here. 30% increased evasion rating, 8% increased maximum life. Great for de dream feather builds, <laughs> but um, just great defense and, you know, solid life and, you know, you can't really go wrong. It's quite a nice strong one. Um, shifting shadow next. 20% increased evasion rating, 20 to dex, and 10% chance to blind enemies on hit. Blind is one of the strongest and probably most sleeper defensive mechanics in the game, um, like I said. Blinded enemies have their chance to hit halved, so you basically get, you know, 50% more of the effect of your dodge and your, you know, evasion and stuff like that. So it's very, very strong. Um, next one, no witnesses. 10% <gasps> chance to gain elusive on kill, 25% increased effect of elusive. Um, yeah, elusive initially grants 15% chance to... Um, Dodge spell or attack hits and 30% increased movement speed. So 25% increased effect of that is 37.5% um, increased movement speed. Um, and yeah, dodge, um, super good. It's just very strong for for a notable like that. You know, you basically can get that on Assassin and that's about it really. Um, and the skill gem, I think it's Withering Step, something like that, yeah. So very, very strong. I like that they're adding a lot of different... Um, options for this. Next up, Molten One's Mark. 2% of maximum fire resistance. Very strong for Righteous Fire with regenerate 1% of life per second. So good for Righteous Fire, dude. Like, or any like self-ignite builds or whatever, you know. Super good. Winter Prowler. 2% maximum cold resist and 6% increased movement speed. Again, maximum resistances, dude. Like, one of the strongest things in the game. If you can get it, get it for sure.
Um, next up, Wizardry, the Lightning version. Very good. Um, increased maximum mana as well. It's a bit different, but, um, you know, generally it's more of a CI sort of option, so it's, it's pretty good. Plus two to maximum Lightning Resist. Strong as hell. We're almost there. We're almost there, people. Born of Chaos, plus three to maximum Chaos Resistance. Actually nuts. Um, dude, Chaos damage in general, like from enemies, has become a lot more prevalent in the last league or two. And being able to cap your Chaos Res at 78 is a fucking amazing. <laughs> like, actually so amazing, dude. So, um, yeah, it's nuts. And last but not least, I think... Um, yeah, last but not least, definitely Anti-Venom. 17 Chaos Resistance and unaffected by Poison. So, you can still be poisoned, but you don't take damage from it. Um, and yeah... And that's it, guys. That's my top, I don't know, 50 or 60 of them. It saves you having to go through all 280 of them. So, you know, just trying to save you guys some time. But that's Those are my thoughts anyway. I think they're all pretty damn strong. Obviously, it depends on their rarity um, and, you know, how easy, well, how easy they are to uh, obtain. But yeah, guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. I've probably missed 100 of them. Um, too. So if there are any that really jump out to you that you that I may have missed, definitely let me know in the comments as well. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, leave a like down below if you liked the video. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike. It doesn't matter. Um, and yeah, guys, click subscribe if you want more Path of Exile news. And I will see you in the next video tomorrow where we go over the patch notes. Probably do a TLDR version of that too. So yeah, thanks so much, guys, and I'll catch you later. Peace.